Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with my card for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. I will have a link to the challenge uh, in my blog post, which is linked directly below the video. And for this card, I die cut several pieces from some distressed watercolor paper using Simon Says Stamps Layered Bunny Wafer Dye. I used this in a recent video and created a little scene with, you know, ink smushing and all the things. And he is the cutest little bunny ever. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed with him. I'm obsessed with everything. Anyway, I cut the pieces from distressed watercolor paper. And I'm putting them onto my little stick and stamp mat just to hold everything in place. And then I pulled out a, uh, an oldie but goodie set. This is the Alstromeria. I think I pronounced that properly. Uh... Alstromeria Stem Wafer Dye. And it also has a few pieces to make the, the bloom a little more dimensional. So I die cut that a couple times as well. And then I just stuck all the pieces to the stick and stamp mat because it just holds them in place. I am loving this. And I prefer, and I've said this in recent videos, I like to die cut things first and then add color regardless of how I add the color. I like to die cut first because then I can see where I'm coloring, you know, what I'm adding, etc. So to color these, I am using my Distress watercolor pencils. Now, if you have not seen my videos or specifically my video making this palette from them, um, I will have a link to my Distress Watercolor Pencil playlist at the end of this video. And the very first video on that playlist is showing how I made this palette. Super simple. Literally just sharpened them all. Put the little shavings from the watercolor pencils into this palette. Added some water. That's why they look solid. And let it dry. And then that's how I use them. I just take my little water brush. As you can see, I swirl it in there. It activates immediately and I paint with it. And for me... I just, I prefer it this way. I have hand issues when it comes to holding um, things like pencils, color pencils, watercolor pencils, and that the pressure needed, you know, to color with them. I can do it. I just would rather not. And again, I found that this works better. Plus, I just like being able to like to pick it up with my water brush and just paint. Um, can you do this with regular watercolor pencils? Probably. I don't know what the, like, unless they're woodless pencils, though, like the palette option, there are woodless watercolor pencils on the market. Um, I had a set from Koei Newer. In fact, I probably still have it in a drawer somewhere. Uh, possibly. You could probably do it. But I talked about this with, um, people have asked me many times with the Distress ones, the biggest draw for them. One, they are, they're very creamy. And the other thing I love about them is um, they're in Distress Colors. And to me, that for me, that's important because I just, I think in distress colors. <laughs> so uh, the color challenge this week was like a light yellow, sage, green, gray, and white. So the bunny, of course, I did in gray. I added a tiny bit of black just to deepen it up a little bit. I did like picked raspberry and sun sugar for the insides of the ears and the nose and whatnot. And then for the florals, I mixed several different colors together just... One to get the kind of green, like the sage sort of green color I had in my head. And two, this just gives it also a little extra um, depth and whatnot. And specifically with this die set, this Alstromeria. Alstromeria? Anyway, um, with this die set, this is why I like to die cut first before adding color. Because when dyes like this um, add piercing detail, things like that. Uh, when you add the color on top, it'll, you know, sink into those areas and it just gives, again, extra texture. Th those parts will curl up a little bit here and there, like the leaves kind of curl up a little bit because of the moisture. And I just, I can't, it's, it's such a simple thing and yet it gives so much extra. So after I did the greenery, the actual pieces for the blooms, I just painted yellow and then I just let it dry. And once everything is done... Uh, my stick and stamp mat, I'm just going to rinse it under the thing. That's what I do. It'll it'll stain as you can, like there's pink staining from, you know, a pink ink I used and that sort of a thing. But I just rinse it under the sink and then I let it air dry. I put the little plastic cover back on it and it's good to go for the next time I use it. So I don't use any um, 
soaps or anything. Brutus Monroe does have a specific cleaner for the stick and stamp mats. I've mentioned this before. I have it. I've never used it. <laughs> I bought it because I was like, oh, I must, I must own this. And then I've never used it. I've just never needed to. I just rinse it, let it air dry. Good to go. So I did all my little uh, painting with the Distress Watercolor pencils. And off camera, I ended up die cutting more and painting more because I needed more. And when I started like fiddling, which I'll get to in a second. So once everything's dry, it's time to assemble. Super, super simple. This bunny comes together so easily, like just ridiculously easily. And yeah, you just adhere the the slightly smaller face piece to the base. Put in the little parts for the ears and the eye. There's that little circle area for his tummy. And you stick that on and then, yeah, it all just comes together. So I just use Craft Tacky Glue to adhere all these pieces together. Once I've got everything adhered, I just stick them under a few acrylic blocks just to hold everything down while the glue dries. Because since I did watercolor these, they're a little bit curled, but not, not, a, not a lot. But yeah. Acrylic blocks, holds everything down, lets them dry. The flowers, again, super easy to adhere. Everything just kind of lines up. You just look at the packaging and it's like, oh, okay, I get it. I get where everything goes. So adhered these together. And um, once they were here, I was like, ooh, I really, they're just it's happy little flowers. Like some of you have been commenting too. It's like, oh, you know, spring. I can't wait for spring. Same. It was snowing here. Was that this morning? I can't even remember. It was a little bit. It wasn't a ton, but still. We still have tons of snow, though. Like, we're getting, like, bare patches of pavement <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait for spring. I just, uh Anyway, I set everything aside. For the the background of the card, I pulled out the, um, it's this floral, floral festoon embossing folders. This is one of Simon's uh, 3D embossing folders. And I have some smoke gray cardstock here and kind of off camera because I didn't feel like pulling out my um, flower sack cloth or anything like that. I just lightly missed the cardstock two or three times with my spray bottle just to add a little bit of moisture. That gives you a way better impression regardless of what brand embossing folder you're using. Adding a bit of moisture to the cardstock just gives a deeper impression. Plus, it helps prevent cracking because some embossed folders, like 3D ones, etc., um, can impress so deeply that they will. Some cardstocks will crack. So adding that helps. With Simon's 3D embossing folders, I use my Platinum Six die cut machine with the platform and the, the original platform, and then I have two metal shims. You could use cardstock etc. They also list with their embossing folders different sandwich options depending on what machine you're using. The biggest takeaway with embossing folders though is do not force it. If your machine is like not wanting to take it, stop, change your sandwich, don't force it through. You can literally break your machine or break your embossing folder. Either one, you know. So I embossed it. The detail, chef's kiss. I let it dry because I had sprayed it. And then I also die cut a rectangle of white cardstock using one of the stitched rectangle wafer dies. Just gives it that nice little stitching detail. And then, yeah, in between all of this off camera, I had die cut another of the Alstromeria stems. And I also used the etched meadow flower and leaves wafer die. Because I was like, it needs more greenery. I just, I needed, you know, more. So I, I got those and did the same thing. Just quickly watercolored them with my Distress Little Watercolor Pencil Palette. Let those dry. They're good to go. So now I'm going to start assembling. I had a rough idea in my head of what, you know, my little kind of layout. This is usually, you know, because people have commented at times. It's like, you know, I, I, I'm not as creative as you. I... You know, it's nice to see, you know, when I include the little bloopers, when I mess things up, that sort of thing. Honestly, I would include it more because trust me, I mess up like 99.999% of the time. Honestly, 110% of the time I'm messing things up. But a lot of times it just doesn't happen on camera. Like you guys don't see me like my elbows knocking everything off the desk. The things I break, oh, the amount of things I break, mm, you know, stamping things backwards, yada, yada, yada. Like, there's always something. And then things like this where 
I have, you know, I'm uh, I'm putting in a cluster of things. A lot of times I'll lay them out first. And if it's even more intricate, I will lay it all out and then take a picture of it with my phone to remind me, you know, because I will in the two minutes between laying it out and then removing it to start adhering, I'll forget. <laughs> There's also other tricks. We've shown that in videos too, using like press and seal to hold everything together, that sort of a thing. Um, with this, I didn't find it uh, necessary. But yeah, I'm just fiddling, you know, I, I, getting all the little flower bits and greenery and whatnot and just adhering them. I didn't use any dimensional adhesive for this because I've got so many layers um, with the die cuts. So that's why I adhered like the, the stitch rectangle directly to the embossed background and then all the die cuts and then the bunny I just adhered. And then I'm just going to stick it under my misty and let that sit for a bit to let the glue just give it its chance to do its thing. Um, acrylic block, actually no acrylic blocks. And then I'll do the misty when I adhere to the card base. Speaking of the card base is a four and a quarter, uh, by five and a half inch A2 top folding white note card. I used a couple more of the etched meadow, etched meadow flower and leaves. Yeah. Uh, die cuts that I colored, stuck those to the inside. And then for my sentiments, I used the, um, some bunny. Is it some bunny? Yeah. Some bunny <laughs> sentiment strips that I used on the other card that I used with this bunny. I love punny sentiments. These aren't, um, I didn't use the Easter themed ones and I, same with the last card because I don't really do Easter cards much. Um, I use more like thank you cards, thinking of you cards, that sort of a thing. So it's kind of Easter adjacent in a sense, but still just sort of open-ended, you know? So I adhered the sentiment on the inside. I then adhered the background and like scene to my card base. And then I took the other sentiment that says just hopping by to say, and I cut that um, into two pieces because I liked that better for how it was going to, you know, lay out on this card. And then adhered those into place with um, some little uh, foam squares and a little bit of craft tacky glue. So then the card will say just hopping by to say, and on the inside it says hoppy spring. Again, punny sentiments. I love them. I love them. So <laughs> I adhered those into place. And then of course I have matching bling. Like I have, I had many matching bling. Uh, <laughs> I had to go through and like finally narrow it down to which one I was going to use. And these uh, buttercup vase, uh, rhinestone-y sequins. Um, they look like milk glass. I love them. These are from Trinity Stamps. So I sprinkled those throughout the card, adhered them into place with dabs of craft tacky glue, decided that wasn't enough and added another one. <laughs> so once I got that adhered, that's going to finish off this card. So like I mentioned earlier, I will have a link to my distress watercolor pencil playlist at the end of this video. So you guys can check it out if you missed any of them or interested in that, etc. And then of course, I'll have a link below the video to my blog post and I'll have a supply list, all of that, that will be linked directly below the videos. Again, you can check that out if you were interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, for commenting, subscribe if you haven't, I'd very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.